them, they came to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness. And there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up to God. And the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Moses, come near and hear the words of the Lord your God. Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation. And Moses came, and he called for the elders of the people, and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded them. And the Israelites responded, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses returned these words of the Israelites unto the Lord. Then the people entered into a solemn covenant with God and accepted him as their ruler, by which they became the peculiar subjects of his divine authority. Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak to thee, and believe thee forever. When the Hebrews had met with difficulties in the way, they were disposed to murmur against Moses and Aaron, and accused them of leading the host of Israel from Egypt to destroy them. Later, the Lord then gave Moses express directions in regard to preparing the people for him to approach not by the angels but by himself. Go and sanctify the people today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day. For the third day I will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. The people were required to refrain from worldly labor and to possess devotional thoughts alone. God required them also to wash their clothes. And he is no less particular now than he was then. He is the God of order and requires his people now upon the earth to observe the habits of strict cleanliness. The creator of the heavens and of the earth considered cleanliness of so much importance that he said, And let them wash their clothes. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mount shall be surely put to death. There shall not an hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned, or shot through, whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet sounded long, they shall come up to the mount. This command was designed to impress the minds of the rebellious people with a profound veneration for God, the author and authority of their laws. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. The angelic host summoned the people by a sound of the trumpet, which sounded louder and louder until the whole earth trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And 
they stood at the nether part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was all together on a smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke therefore ascended as the smoke of a furnace. And the whole mount quaked greatly. The divine majesty descended in a cloud with a glorious retinue of angels who appeared as flames of fire. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, <coughs> Moses spake. And God answered him by a voice. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mountain. And the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mountain. And Moses went up. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down and charge the people lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. And let the priests also, which come near to the Lord, sanctify themselves, lest the Lord break forth upon them. After the Lord had given them such evidence of his power, he told them who he was. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. The same God who exalted his power among the Egyptians now spoke his law. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor, and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, in it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And the people stood afar. Fear not, for God has come to prove you, and that his fear may be for your faces, that you sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. The majestic presence of God at Sinai, and the commotions in the earth occasioned by his presence, the fearful thunderings and lightnings which accompanied this visitation of God, so impressed the minds of the people with fear 
and reverence to his sacred majesty that they instinctively drew back from the awful presence of God, lest they should not be able to endure his terrible glory. Again, God would guard the children of Israel from idolatry. He said unto them, Ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall you make unto you gods of gold. They were in danger of imitating the example of the Egyptians and making to themselves images to represent God. The Lord said to Moses, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice, and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies, and an adversary unto thine adversaries, for mine angel shall go before thee, and bring thee in unto the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them, and quite break down their images. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread, and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. God would have his people understand that he alone should be the object of their worship. And when they should overcome the idolatrous nations around them, they should not preserve any of the images of their worship, but utterly destroy them. Moses had not written the Ten Commandments, but wrote the promises and the judgments which God would have them observe. He read this to the people, and they pledged, And they pledged themselves to obey all the words which the Lord had said. Moses then wrote their solemn pledge in a book and offered sacrifice unto God for the people. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. The people repeated their solemn pledge to the Lord to do all that he had said and to be obedient. There were but a few families that first <laughs> that first went down into Egypt. These increased to a great multitude. Some were careful to instruct their children in the law of God, but many others had witnessed so much idolatry that they had confused ideas of God's law. Those who feared God cried to him in anguish and spirit to break their yoke of grievance, bondage, and bring them from the land of their captivity that they might be free to serve him. God heard their cries and raised up Moses as his instrument to accomplish the deliverance of his people. After they had left Egypt and the waters of the Red Sea had been divided before them, the Lord proved them to see if they would trust in him who had taken them, a nation from another nation, by signs, temptations, and wonders. But they failed to endure the trial. They murmured against God because of difficulties in the way and wished to return again to Egypt.